Hey guys, CJX here. I have another deck profile and commentary for you guys. This is the Lunar Lights. I'm sure you guys have all heard about it. It's popping up all over the social media lately, so I'm sure you guys know about it. Uh, I actually went to YCS Chicago as well and played Lunar Lights. So that's why I'm going to be showcasing my deck profile for you guys. It's all good. Let's get to the, the deck profile. So we're playing the three main cards of the deck, which is three Kaleido Chicks. You want to play three of these. This is basically the heart and soul of your deck. Like what the, the YCS champion said. A lot of people don't know how to play against the deck. So they, they'll waste like their impermanence on this. Or whatever hand traps they have on this. And they don't know that Calabrity's effect is actually a cost to send the Little Light monster to your grave. So if you guys want to know how to stop stop this deck. Basically don't let Calabrity go off. So once she hits the field. You either book a moon her. Or do something to get rid of her. Or just don't let her go off. Next up. The next best card is Tiger. You play three tigers. This is basically your free monster reborn of the deck. If you scale it, it has the effect of you can target one Lunar Light monster in your grave. Special summon it, its effects are negated. So that doesn't really matter. When you're summoning Collateral Chick off of Tiger's effect, it doesn't even matter if Collateral Chick's effects are negated. You can still activate the effect to send a Lunar Light monster to the grave as cost. And that's basically all that matters. So its effect to negate the monster, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. All you need is just send a Collateral Chick and then do the combo. Play three Martins. I see some folks, they play two, just me personally, I like playing three. I just want to see it as soon as possible. Uh, this is basically also a free summon, and this is the card that, you know, that abuses. You, you can basically abuse Tiger off of her, because Tiger, you can get multiple summons uh, just off of her, because basically she has an effect where you can bounce a card, a Lunar Light card from your, your field to your hand. So you use Tiger's effect to special summon, and then you activate Martin to basically bounce Tiger back to your hand, and then you're going to activate Tiger again, and then, you know, just keep special summoning it. And it's not once per turn, so that's the broken part. Play two wolves. This is basically your fusion summon of the deck. Uh, you don't need poly, this is your polymerization. It has a scale effect of you can banish three Lunar Light monsters in your grave to fusion summon a Lunar Light monster from your extra deck. That's basically all it does. It doesn't do anything else. It has a, a monster effect of, you know, you can attack and um, Lunar Light monsters you control does piercing damage. That doesn't really come up. Basically, you're just using wolf to fusion summon. That's, that's all it is. Play two black sheeps. I think black sheep you can maybe cut it down to one. Two is just my ratio that I liked. Three, I think three is too much. During play testing, I actually uh, upped this up to three, and I was breaking pretty often, so I dropped it back down to two. And it to me, it, it felt good. But honestly, I think you you can only play one. You should only play one. And I think that should be fine. The one ofs play one blue cat. Uh, this helps with OTK, but during the whole tournament, basically never came up. So I think honestly, uh, I will cut her out for me. Uh, probably uh, butter spy. I think that's. The, the one. I'll post, I'll post up a picture here somewhere here too. Uh, basically her effect is that she, she's in the grave, she can banish herself and special summon a Lunar Light monster from your hand. So if, let's say if you have a Cloud Chick in your hand, you can just banish it, special a Cloud Chick and then just go off. There's another one of one Summoner Monk. Basically Summoner Monk is it's another copy of Cloud Chick. Your normal summon that uh, uses the effect to pitch a spell to your grave and you can special summon Cloud Chick from your deck to the field and then you could just go off. So if you have this and Tiger, it's essentially the same thing. And next up we have a Shadow a dragon. The reason why we're playing Shadow Dragon in here is because we're actually playing three Shadow Fusions in the deck. And so basically, if you activate Shadow Fusion, you can send this and Martin to your grave, and then you get Window on the field or Construct if you want, and then Martin can search you a Lunar Light Spell or Trap. And Tiger, uh, sorry, Tiger, uh, Dragon can pop a Spell or Trap card on the field. So it's really good going second. You you can pop their back row. That, that's basically what all of this. And then two hand traps. Obviously, play three Ash Blossoms. Uh, best hand trap ever printed. In my opinion, you just have to play three. You can opt to side side like these as well. Uh, next up, the Gamma package. This is really good. This avoids cards like Call by the Grave, and you can negate card effects from the hand. This actually won me a couple games against Thunder Dragon uh, Dangers uh, when they when they were activating Kenahawk to you know special summon a, dra a dragon from their grave. Then I was able to just you know gamma and stop them and uh, you know how you win is basically you just don't want to let them have any thunder dragon mo or thunders on the field and if they can't go to colossus or titan then uh, you're pretty much in a good spot to win onto spells the three best search cards in that deck is obviously tanky 
they basically can search any Lunar Knight monster in your deck. The only one that it can't search is Wolf, but that's fine because one of the combos is that you can normal Chick, uh, effect of Chick to send Wolf to Grave, and then you can activate this uh, to search Black Sheep to your hand, and then you can just discard Black Sheep to add Wolf to your hand. So basically, it doesn't really matter anyway because there, there's so many ways to get access into your cards. Next up, you have to play three Lunar Knight perfumes. This is basically Monster Reborn on Crack, Monster Reborn for the Archetype, and its effects not once per turn. Both of its effects actually, to, uh, to the first one to special summon and the second one to discard a card to search for a Lunar Knight monster is not once per turn. And uh, basically that's all the card does. Three Foolish Burial Goods. You play three because you want to be able to send perfume to your from your deck to the grave uh, as soon as possible. Just so, you know, if you're missing combo pieces, then you're able to kind of just search them all off of goods. I played three Twin Twisters. The reason why I decided to play three Twin Twisters is because I'm playing a Golden, golden Second Lunar Lights. So I just want to make sure that I'm not losing to any back row decks at all. And, you know, with the current meta, you're playing against decks like Sky Strikers, Alter Guys, True Dragos. I mean, True Dragos more like on the still like on the rogue rogue side, but you know, going against decks like Sky Strikers and Alter Guys, these three really really help. And that's why I played three. And also, you know, discarding your Lunar Knights with Grave doesn't really affect the deck because you kind of want them there anyway. <laughs> and, you know, you can discard cards like Perfume too, or it needs to be in the Grave so you can, you know, activate effect to search stuff. So it just works out perfectly. And then you guys already know, three Fusions, also really good, going second. Uh, more than likely, your opponent's gonna have a monster that's summoned from the extra deck. So you can just make Construct or you can make Winda if you want. Uh, both really powerful monsters. And actually, these three, um, I would probably take the Shadal Engine out. I'm my personal opinion after with the YCS. I just think that there's better better options um, than playing these since I, I only resolved like Shadal Fusion like once or twice throughout the whole tournament and uh, it was so far. It wasn't that great. Definitely change these out. Uh, I know that the winner, um, he played Danger Lunar Lights. So I mean, I think the better option would probably just play Dangers in here. The one of one Monster Reborn, one Foolish Burial, and one Lunar Light Fusion. Again, these two were really good. Lunar Light Fusion, I would definitely cut out. Uh, even before the, tor the tournament, I actually thought about cutting it out, but I decided just to play with this, and you know, it was a bad decision actually, because I never I never resolved this at all. I never even activated it once. I, whenever I drew into it, or I was able to search for it, it was basically just a dead card in my hand, and it wasn't able to do anything. So I would definitely cut Fusion out. So onto the extra deck. Your, your Xyz are Tiger King, Abyss Dweller, Tornado Dragon, and uh, Nightmare. These are the four I chose to play with. Obviously, you know, this is just uh, my, my deck. You guys can obviously build off of this and, you know, incorporate your own cards in there if you guys want. The reason why I chose to play these four is because in the meta, it's really good. I didn't want to lose any combo decks if they made me go first. Obviously, I'm, a little, uh, you know, playing Little Knight, so if they make me go first, I want to have options where I can kind of interrupt during their turn. That's why I decided to play Nightmare, and this guy actually helped me a lot one game. And um, Tornado Dragon, you know, just being able to pop back row. Abyss Dweller, really good go, uh, going against decks that utilize the grave, like Burning Abyss and whatnot. And Tiger King, you have to play the one Tiger King. This is just really good. This helps you search for Fire Formation Tanky, and then you can just search your Lone Lights, and then you can just go off. It's also a Beast Warrior, so it helps you go into uh, the next monster that I'm going to be sh showing you guys. So, if you have two Beast or Beast Warrior or Winged Beast uh, monsters um, on the field, you can link it to this guy, which is Doll. He's a really good link. He has basically the effect where you can target one of your traps and target one of your opponent's battle traps and destroy it. That's basically all it does and its first effect is it only gains 100 attack for each beast, beast warrior, and winged beast monsters on the field and essentially that that is it. It doesn't do much else. It also has a third effect of you can target one of your beast, beast warrior, or winged beast monsters that is going to banish or in your graveyard and add it to your hand. So it does have some utility but essentially this guy is just to you know you, you either make it a pop back row or you make it to go into some sorcerers. So playing Dramadol, play one phoenix to pop back row, play one Nightmare Unicorn just so that I can out things like losses or whatnot. Uh, it's just really good to have. I also play uh, Underclock Taker for OTK. I actually OTK'd one, one opponent with an Underclock Taker and Leo Dancer. That was basically the game. And then I also decided to play one Clara and Rushka. The reason why I decided to play her because during playtesting with my uh, buddy Bryce, he played Alter Guys. And if they open Secret Village, you're screwed, man. <laughs> you're basically you're screwed. I have, I have no outs at all. Dr if I didn't throw in 
into like Summoner Monk or basically the Shadow Dragon, I was screwed. The whole deck, your whole deck has a lot of spells too, so you want to be able to activate your spell cards. And to me, my out to that was Clear and Washika because all you have to do is you go on second, so you're just gonna normal summon and you know, or actually don't even normal summon, just enter battle phase, bluff them out, you know, make them think that you have evenly matched. If they think that you have evenly matched, they're, they're gonna make mis misplays and then you know, activate their back rows and whatnot, try to get rid of as many cards as they can, and then just go to main phase two. And then you know, you just normal summon and then you link you link your normal summon monster off into Clara and Rushka, and then you can from there you can activate your spell cards and whatnot and just can do go back and do your plays. So this is really good for that. And last but not least, play the summon sorcerers. Summon sorcerers was really good, basically just extends your plays and allows you to make collateral check to send more stuff to your grave. And then the last the last link monster I played was Borlord Dragon. I decided not to play Boar Sword in this deck because Leo Dancer does the same thing. She's a 35 beat stick. She can attack twice and she, that's basically game already. So that's why I didn't uh, play Boar Sword in the deck. I opted to play Boar Lord because Boar Lord can out a lot of troublesome cards that can't be targeted or whatnot. I actually helped me one game too where I attacked into a Colossus, I stole it, and then from there I just won. Fusions of the deck, playing one Winda, one Saber Dancer, one Panther Dancer, and one Leo Dancer. So this is all the fusion cards that you're playing in the extra deck. The Winda, I'll, again, I only made it once. I don't think that um, you know I would I would play the Shadal Engine in, it, in the Lunar Lights moving forward. Probably take it out and play Dangers. And then Saber Dancer was really good. Panther Dancer, you can't make her in the deck, but basically you just want to be able to send her off so that you can make Leo Dancer. Leo Dancer is basically a win condition. If they out this, then you just make Saber Dancer and then and then good luck to your opponent trying to out this because usually by the time when you make a uh, Saber Dancer, she's going to be like 5,000 attack and then good luck to your opponent. <laughs> you know, I actually won one game because I made Leo Dancer. My opponent was playing Strikers and he made Negrusu to out it and then I was able to make Saber Dancer and then he was actually able to out it too and then he, my opponent made the mistake of uh, because I activated Tiger to target this to special summon and he activated Solemn Warning and then <laughs> when Tiger got destroyed, I was able to activate Tiger's um, monster effect to target a Lone Light uh, in the great special summon so obviously our Tiger, I targeted the Saber Dancer to special summon and Saber Dancer is really really good like Leo Dancer where she cannot be targeted by card effects too so basically my opponent was screwed and it's funny too because he had a Borosol Dragon on the board but he only had like 2100, uh, he had 2100 life points left, I had 10, 10 uh, Beast Warriors that was banished so uh, Saber Dancer was at 5000, I had 2 Tinkies on field 2 so she was 52 so I just attacked over the, the Boar Sword for 22 <laughs> and 4 game, that was really funny. So onto the, my side, I decided to play with 2 Eradicator ep Epidemic Virus. I would definitely up this to 3, I regret not playing 3. You know, I, I actually resolved this a couple times during playtesting, never actually resolved it during you know, the extra tournament, but I think this is a really good call and definitely will up this to 3 moving forward. Uh, the reason why you play the Eradicator in the deck is because you have a ton of dark monsters in your extra deck. Primarily, your fusion monsters are 3,000 or higher, and they're dark. So, and they're really easy to make too. Really easy to make. And you just basically make Saber Dancer, and then if you drill into this, you just set one of these, and just, you know, uh, whatever your opponent's playing. If they're playing Strikers or they're playing Alter Guys, all you have to do is just you know activate this, tribute your Saber Dancer, and then you just win, man. You just win. Next up, three Pinker Traps. This is also really good. Uh, outs a lot of things and uh, you know you true as cost like you know if they want to widow anchor it you can just true as cost and then pop another card so it's also really good it's 2600 piece thick the deck loses two cards like inspector border so you lose the inspector border because you want to be able to activate your monster effects if you can't even activate collateral chick you're kind of screwed so that's why you want to play pink or top so that just so that you know you can beat over the inspector border next best card i think is evenly matched Definitely play three up in the deck. Really good against, uh, really strong against uh, back row happy decks and and just decks that really just want to overextend. You punish them with evenly matched. That's all I have to say. I played two Book of Eclipse. I would definitely up this to three as well. So the deck is really strong, but one weakness it has is that it, it also does a lot of searching. So if you are trying to get rid of or play through Colossus, it's really hard. So to do that, you need cards like Book of Eclipse to kind of, you know, just help you with that. Next best card I think is Red Reboot. Play three. So this basically just shuts down back row decks and you just OTK your opponent. So this card is basically your win condition. If you're playing against those decks and you're siding this in, you just win. So the last two I played was Called by the Grave. I never resolved this in the tournament. I honestly think that this was a bad decision to play. I would definitely take out one of these for another Eradicator ep Epidemic Virus. And then I would take out the other one for, um, what is it, another Book of Eclipse. 
All right, so for the OTK combo, all you need is a Lunai Tiger and one Collateral Chick in your hand. Uh, just a two card combo is you're able to OTK your opponent. So basically what you want to do is once you go ahead and summon the Collateral Chick uh, anywhere you want, I'll just go ahead and summon it here. I like, to, I like to summon it on the most left corner or the most right, just so that I don't plug these on um, spots here. So let's go ahead and summon the Chick, activate Chick's effect. Cost, you're going to send the Martin from your deck to the grave. So after that, go ahead and activate Tiger Skill Effect. You're going to activate that to target the Martin and Grave to Special Summon it. So go ahead and Special Summon it there. At this point, you want to go ahead and just link them off for your Link 2 to the Drama Doll. And then from here, go ahead and activate the Martin's Effect in Grave to target the Tiger in your field and bounce back to your hand, summoning itself. Go ahead and scale Tiger's Effect again. It's not a once per, uh, not a hard once per turn, so go ahead and activate his effect to target the Cloud Shade in your grave again to Special Summon. So Special Summoning it there. Uh, even though its effects are negated, you can still activate her effect um, as cost to send a Little Light monster from your extra deck or your deck to the grave. So that's what's really good about these monsters, that they're not once per turn, that they're not a hard once per turn. So activate her, uh, her effect again to send uh, any card you want now. So it's just sending the pieces that you need. So let's go ahead and send the Wolf to the grave. And then from here, let's go ahead and just link them off. So linking these two off into your link three. So summoning the summoning uh, summon sources. Activate summon source to target the Martin to summon out another beast warrior. So at this point, let's go ahead and summon out another cloud chick. Activate her effect again, even though it's negated, you can still activate it for cost. So sending uh, the Leo Dancer, well not the Leo Dancer, the Panther Dancer for your extra deck to the grave, because you're gonna need that to summon Leo Dancer. And then from here, go ahead and just actually summon into Tiger King. You're gonna activate his on summon effect to set a fire formation card for spell or trap from your deck to the field. So setting it, you're gonna go ahead and just activate it, adding you any beast warrior level four or lower from your deck to your hand, adding you the black sheep to your hand. This is really good because you can activate Black Sheep's effect to discard itself to the grave to add any little light card or uh, any little light monster, I'm sorry, from your graveyard to your hand. So let's go ahead and activate it now. So let's go ahead and add the wolf from your grave to your hand. So yeah, now you have the wolf. Let's move these a little bit over here. Actually, let's move them back. So you're going to activate it in Pendulum Scale here. So activating it there. And then now you, you should have enough to summon Leo Dancer. So you'll, let's go ahead and just, uh, uh, you can activate now actually, or if you know, you're know you on second and somehow uh, magically your opponent cannot respond to you, you can activate Tiger King's effect too to detach the collateral chick as cost to basically hit, uh, skill drain everything on the field. So all other monsters except Beast Warrior, all their effects are uh, negated. So you could do that as well. Otherwise you can leave it at this because you already have enough Little, uh, little light monsters in your grave, so you can go ahead and just uh, let's just say uh, activate wolf, uh, activate the scale effect to banish three little lights in your grave to finish summon. So I'm banishing one, two, and three. So banishing those guys there to summon your Leo Dancer there, and at this point. You basically have the OTK because if your opponent has monsters that are special summoned, you can use the dancer just to clear an attack, destroy that monster, and you know if it's an attack mode, you can do it some damage. Uh, even if it's a defense, you can just attack, and then at the end of the damage step, use her effect to destroy all special summon monsters your opponent controls. And then from there, basically they'll have nothing left on the board, and you can just swing, swing, and swing, and that uh, basically is a lot of damage. Basically. Yeah, so basically that's a lot of damage. That should be game because this is uh, 36 direct, uh, 36 plus 23, um, and this is 24. So that should be game in itself. 23, 24, that is 40. I'm trying to do a math for 47. 47 uh, plus 36 is. Uh, Oh yeah, that's definitely more than 8,000 damage right there. So that's game right there. Uh, so yeah, this is one of the OTKs that you can probably uh, you can do in the deck. All right, so as you guys may know already, the deck kind of struggles against Thunder Dragons. So basically in this combo, I'm gonna showcasing how to make a board load with just two cards. So all you need is just Tiger and Cloud Chick. Uh, most of the combos in the deck revolve around just Tiger and Chick anyways. So if you have these two to start with, you're basically lit. If your opponent has a, you know, the Colossus, Double Colossus, Triple Colossus, then you're basically set. If they have a Titan and Interruption, then you're kind of, eh, you kind of have to play around that a little bit. So, but if you essentially have these two cards in hand and they just have Colossus, then you're set. So basically what you want to do is just normal the Chick, activate the Chick, sending the Martin to your grave. At this point, activate Tiger. Tiger is going to activate the effect to target the Martin to Special Summon. So now you have two monsters that you can go into a Link to. So link these two off for any Link to in your extra deck. So if you're playing Dramadol, you can summon Dramadol. 
if you're playing with Iron Clock or any other Link 2, then you can summon that. So I'll summon this. So essentially, you just want to send these two to the grave. So activate the Martin's Effect Engrave to target your Lunatite Tiger, add it to your hand to summon itself. And then go ahead and just activate the, the Tiger again and activate the Tiger's Effect to target the Cloud Chick in your grave to special summon itself. So special summoning it there. You don't want to go into some sort and then, you know, use the effect to target to special summon uh, another low line from your deck to the, to the field. You don't want to do that because summon sort is a, uh, it's a link three and you have two monsters on board. So that means you're not able to go into a link four. So that's what, that's, you don't want to do that. So at this point, now you have, uh, you know, two monsters in a link two, you can go to a link four. So why don't we just link these off? And at this point, uh, Martin's can be banished, but that's that's okay because you just want to be able to out their board. So at this point, link into a link four four Lord Dragon, and then now you just can enter battle phase and just start taking their classes or their monsters, and then you just went from there. And then the extra three cards that you have, or actually four cards if you're going second, so it could be another card. So four cards. These are basically extenders too, or basically these could be your side deck cards or anything that can help you win the match. So, but essentially this is the two card combo to, to make board load and you can just go, uh, go ahead and just kill your opponent. So, uh, yeah, uh, this is basically the combo guys. I hope you guys like the video. I hope you guys like the combos. Basically, you know, this is a really strong deck and people don't know how to play it. But, you know, now, <laughs> now I'm showing you guys a deck. You guys can probably have a better understanding of it. I know that there's already a lot of other uh, you know, deck profiles out there as of right now. But uh, basically this is just a little uh, in-depth combo tutorial for you guys so that you guys can understand how to play the deck a little bit better. Yeah, if you guys like it, you know, put a thumbs up. If you guys don't, put a thumbs down. Any suggestions or anything like that, leave it in the comment section below. I always read it. I love reading your comments. And, you know, as a player, that's, that's how we that's how we improve and that's how we evolve uh, by learning from each other and um, basically giving each other advice, you know. So I really appreciate that. Yeah. And uh, I actually picked some video while I was over there. So I'll be kind of showcasing those videos at the end of the video here to show you guys that I was actually there. But I, I actually didn't top or anything, but you know, I was there. Definitely more combo tutorials and deck profiles to come. Um, yeah, hope to see you guys soon. Peace. Thanks for watching.